This year marks the 10th anniversary of what's probably my favorite piece of television entertainment, Saiho Pass. A show about the near future Japan that is ruled by the Sibum system, a system that can determine the criminal factor of an individual without them even having to commit a crime, and the police force that carries out its will. And with a new movie being announced to celebrate that anniversary, I'm glad to see that the series is still going strong after all these years. Sure, it had its ups and downs, and by downs I mean the whole of its second season, but the quality of the first season and the content following the second one keeps the show from being a one-hit wonder. Hopefully the new movie will continue that trend, but that's best left for when it eventually comes out. What really caught me off guard when I started watching Psycho Pass is how good it managed to draw me into its world with only one episode. It's still the only show that managed to hook me into continuing to watch it from episode 1, so in order to understand what makes it such an effective introduction, I'll be going through the whole episode and dissect it bit by bit, to see why Psycho Pass episode 1 is the best first episode I ever saw. The episode starts in medias res, showing a man on top of a skyscraper engaged in combat with a helmeted individual. He's having some trouble because his gun doesn't appear to be working. That is, until he damages his opponent's helmet, after which the fight reaches a... Colorful conclusion. All this is observed by a third person that greets the victor of the fight and they stare each other down menacingly indicating some connection between the two, and that this was a confrontation just waiting to happen. After they exchange pleasantries, the intro sequence ends and we'll have to wait until episode 16 to unravel the string of events that led to the moment and how it will ultimately conclude. This scene serves two purposes. One is to introduce the central conflict between one of the show's protagonists with the show's antagonist, and two, building anticipation for the development and resolution of said conflict. By showing us the climax of the situation right at the start, it entices our curiosity to know what led the characters to end up in this situation, and how it will be resolved. It's a frequently used technique in storytelling, but one of those if it ain't broke don't fix it, so I don't mind it. After that we jump back some time to the first day on the job for the new inspector for the criminal investigation department, Akane Tsunemori. She is met at the crime scene by her senior inspector Nobuchi Kaginoza, who gives her a rundown of the situation. A man flanked by a street scanner to take treatment for his elevated psychopath's value has escaped to an abolition block and taken a woman hostage, and it's their job to bring him in and secure the hostage. They are then joined by individuals known as enforcers, who are latent criminals, meaning people with a high psychopath's value that would usually be stuck at a correction facility but are granted some form of freedom by hunting down people with high psychopaths values like themselves. Among them is the man from the opening scene, named Shinya Kogami. They are introduced by Inspector Ginoza as nothing but hunting dogs, criminals who are only good for tracking down other criminals, and warns Inspector Tsunemori to not consider them as human. They are also informed of the situation and are then split into two groups, with Inspector Ginoza taking charge of the two younger enforcers while leaving the two older and more experienced enforcers with Inspector Tsunemori, one of them being Kogami and the other the most seasoned of the bunch, Tomomi Masaoka. They present Inspector Tsunemori with their weapon, the Dominator, a gun that only works on latent criminals, and explain to her that her job is basically to keep an eye on them while they do all the work and Kogami notes that if at any point she disagrees with how they do things, she should shoot them with the Dominator, since they are also latent criminals and the gun works on them. This section of the episode is the exposition dump, but it's not jarring like a lot of exposition dumps in other shows because of its framing as a police briefing and introduction to the job for a new inspector, and the audience is not bombarded with any unnecessary information. Only the amount the characters would realistically give in a situation like that and just enough that the newcomers to the show have a basic understanding of how things work in the show's setting. And it gives us some basic characterization for every major character to let us know what they're about. After the unobtrusive exposition scene, both teams go on to find the target, and during that time Akane scans Masaoka with her Dominator to confirm he's really a latent criminal since he didn't struck her as one when they were talking, showing early on that the system they work under is not as perfect as it's made out to be. Masaoka gives her some advice about the job, but their talk is cut short by the other team's message that they found the target and converged to their location. The target escapes however, taking the hostage with him, 
so they have to hurry and find him before the hostage's mental state worsens, since extreme stress leads to one's psychopath deteriorating. Akane and Masaoka confront the target and make him drop his guard enough for Kogami to neutralize him. Akane rushes to the woman that was held hostage to tell her she has nothing to worry about anymore, but is shocked to hear Masaoka say to shoot the hostage with the Dominator since her psychopath has exceeded normal value, but she refuses to do so saying she can't let that happen to an otherwise innocent woman. She confronts Masaoka about it and the hostage flees in terror with Kogami pursuing her. He finds her collapsed in a pile of leaking fuel canisters, aiming his dominator on her, prompting her to threaten to light the fuel with the lighter she took from her kidnapper, lighting them both on fire. This causes her threat level to rise, so the dominator goes into lethal eliminator mode. Akane then arrives to the scene, pleading Kogami not to kill the woman, but he gets ready to shoot, so she shoots him before he gets his chance. She calms the woman down, ensuring her they were there to help her which improves her mental state and decreases her threat level, but Inspector Ginza arrives at the scene and shoots her anyway, found by with only a non-lethal paralyzer, and informs Akane he expects a detailed report on the way she handled the situation. This also serves to give us more characterization, primarily for the main character, Akane, showing us she is a kind person with a strong sense of justice, which at times brings her into conflict with the very system she is supposed to uphold, and it also shows us the flaws in the system and how it fundamentally contradicts itself in its solution to protect the people, which is the other central conflict of the show. So in the span of one episode, Psychopath has explained how its society function, gave us enough characterization for the main cast to give them all distinguishable personalities and make us care for them, and set up two major conflicts present in the first season, one of which is ongoing through the home show. That is more than some shows do in a season, let alone an episode. Of course, as the season progresses, all of these elements are expanded upon, but without the strong foundations the first episode laid out for the rest of the show, I don't think I would be nearly as interested in seeing it through to the end, and Psychopaths may not have been my favorite TV show of all time. But as it is, the first season was exceptionally good from start to finish, and it's what made me come back to the show even after the disappointing second season. Thankfully, since then it managed to again come back on the right course, and hopefully it will continue to do so. Either way, that first season and the first episode will always have a special place in my heart.